Uh, Simwell, cut your volumes up. You know what time it is. It is the number one show here in Simworld. This is Blazing Takes. I am Rick Blaze, and I'm joined by Siege. How are we doing on a Friday, bro, brother? Oh, we're doing beautifully. We finally made it to Friday. I mean, not not quite as good as Monday, some would say, but Friday is a pretty good day. Friday is a pretty good day. So I'm I'm riding high. Just made a great deal in my uh, dynasty fantasy football league. So we're 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 feeling good today, Rick. We're feeling good, and we got right. and we got we got a new region. We got a new region to talk about. The last region on our list. Let's talk about the Founders region. Um, and the first team we're going to talk about is probably the most highly anticipated team to watch this year, and that is the Originators. Um, you're not going to talk about the Originators without talking about the number one high school basketball player in the world, not just in SimWorld Prep, and that's Cooper Flagg. Um, joined SimWorld Prep this offseason. Alyssa Dodge, you know, had some had – some, location advantages in getting him but was able to secure him he's with the originators we're talking about a six foot nine athletic forward who really there are not many weaknesses in his game we've seen him put up 10 plus blocks in multiple games um throughout his career already and that's a pretty terrifying thing when you think about putting him at the four next to victorious ilgauskas because he's also a lot quicker on his feet than victorious so it gives them that secondary rim protector right there and that's all without even talking about um, his offensive game, which he's pretty much a do-it-all kind of guy, facilitate, score at all three levels. I mean, this is the guy to watch. And so ex- expectations are going to be high for this team. But already mentioned, Victoria Silgowskis is another big name, big key for them. Defensive-minded, seven foot 270. He is the anchor for this team. And then they brought in Jay Laster from the Yacht Club, six foot five. He looks like a wing. But he has a tendency to run the point, facilitate well. I think we're going to see him get to facilitate a lot more with this team than he did last year. But we also know that he is a great scorer on really all three levels. So there's a lot to be excited about about this team. What are kind of your thoughts going into the season for them? Hey, man, this Originators team, I think, is the number one team to beat coming into um, the beginning of the season. Uh, With all due respect to the champions, Beast of the East, I think the originators on paper coming into the coming into the season is the number one team uh, to beat. I love their front court of Flag and Ilgaskas. I think all the things that Ilgaskas uh, are not great at, his, all of his shortcomings, Flag has them. And all and whatever you can, Flag don't really have any shortcomings. But if you gonna say something, uh, I don't even know what you would say. I watched the team. I watched their scrimmages. Uh, because of Flag's athletic ability, he's never out of position defensively. And also because of his size and athletic ability, athletic ability, he's never get not getting a shot that he doesn't like. Yep. that's a scary, scary, scary sight for the league. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what these coach, coaches do to game plan for this team. I think this team. It's a very well balanced team. You mentioned uh, Jay Lasso who can fill it up. Uh, they also got uh, Caleb, uh, Caleb as a point guard. You got Jace, Chase, Jace Daniels also is a good defensive guy. And I think I think the 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 X factor for this team, if there is an X factor, because the guys you mentioned are already very good. I think the X factor for this team is Justin McGavin. Air Canada, uh, Air Canada. Sorry about that. Air, Air Canada. Canada. Yes, I've been I've been high on him since. Since since day one, uh, his ability to do a little bit of everything. He can shoot the ball lights out. We know that he has a little bit of athleticism. He also can facilitate as well. So I think him and Jay Laster uh, may, you know, share the facilitation role. But I, I think this is number one team to beat, in my in my opinion, coming to the season. Uh, if I'm doing the, the rankings for teams, originally this is number one on my list. Yep. I would, I, mean, agree they're, they're, there. I would agree there. And and that's not even mentioning yes. Kamari Ward, who has a lot of upside to right. his game. And he played next to DJ Wagner, so maybe he didn't get to shine so much last year. But I think he's going to get a chance this year being a returning guy for them. Um, and a lot of people are really high on him. He, he's got some got some tools in his, his box. Yeah, you're, you're, we're going to have to see, and it's going to be an ongoing situation, the best way to attack the originators. I would have to think about that from the coach. And There's he, no... You're going to have to have a game plan because, yeah, I, even me saying it right now, I would have to take some time to think about that because they're probably going to be 
the most difficult thing to to game plan for, in my opinion. I would agree, and especially because again, we're going to keep talking about Cooper Flag's defensive, you know, capabilities. We could talk about his offensive capabilities, but everyone listening in the whole world already knows how good this kid is on offense with no holes in his game. But when you talk about his defensive ability next to Victoria Sogalskis, that's what I think makes this team so much scarier than last year um, is the fact that last year what was kind of their downfall was towards the end of the season, teams started to realize that if you pull Victoria Sogalskis out of the paint, he doesn't quite have the foot speed to recover and defend the rim. Um, Like you mentioned, because of Cooper Flagg's athleticism and his timing with shot blocking, He's never out of a play. So never mind never. the fact that now you have two rim protectors, but one of them is incredibly mobile. So that that to me is what makes this team so much scarier than last year because, yes, yeah. DJ Wagner was an incredible offensive powerhouse. He was he could do a little bit of everything on offense. Cooper Flagg can do that too, and he's got about seven inches on on Yeah, on and, 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 and also he limits – the addition of Flagg limits – uh, how much of a bind you can put the originators in. You can yeah. only now put a for a pick and roll, screen and roll, you're trying to get on the switch. Only person you can switch on now is the Gaskas. Yep. You can't you can't take the four, better not be switching. You better not have a switch to have flag in that mix. That's gonna not gonna look good for your team. No, and that's so the, even they, if you get Ilgowska switched, have, flag is gonna make his way to the rim to defend it. You know what I mean? So like hopefully it, it's scary. hopefully so now so now you gotta have your four Almost isolated, uh, completely away from the basket in the corner somewhere because, and and hope that 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 originally was playing man, they're playing zone and you're still in trouble. Like they ca- they can't they're gonna cause a lot. They're gonna give coaches nightmares staying up yep. late at night trying to game plan for them for these for this team. Again, they are the most a uh, difficult team to game plan for coming into the season. And I and I will I can't wait to see. What well, Beast of the East does against them the yep. second time around, not the first time, because they played them game one. So I think, my opinion, I haven't talked to, to Coach Drayton. I don't know any of this to be facts, but I think Coach Drayton is going to go in with a particular game plan. I think he's going to just ride it out and kind of see what works. And so I, I think the real game plan for uh, originators from Coach Drayton, you won't see until you play them the second time. I think the first time he's going to look and say, "Okay, let me see how this goes." Yep. Let me see what they do. And, it's and then I make you. the adjustments this time. We yeah. were talking about how yeah. hard they are to game plan for in terms of attacking this defense. Offensively, also incredibly tough to, to game plan how you're going to defend this team because of the shooters and the playmakers around the ultimate playmaker in Cooper Flag. So it's this is a scary team. To, to simplify everything, it's a scary team. And I think they're right there with Bay Area Breakers, and it is most likely championship or bust for this team. Not most likely. It's championship or bust for this team as well. Um, they're in that same category. I'm not sure if there's a third team who, who is in that category with them, but those two certainly are in that category. But, I ain't mad at that. Again, so summarize, scary. On to the next team. This is a team I'm actually really high on. Um, some people are a little skeptical, but let's talk about the North. So the North brought in new coach, not a new coach, but brought him in from Gulf Coast, uh, Coach right. Hyman. Coach Hyman brought with him Akeem Young, who people are sleeping on a little, if you ask me. One of the leading rebounders last year, an athletic, strong, big, can defend the paint, can rebound. You don't really need him to score because they've got a guy, and this is their guy, Alex Rodriguez. Now, I'm going to give you a hot take. I know we've been doing team previews, so you haven't maybe heard so many hot takes from Blazing Takes, but I'm going to give you what might be a hot one. I think Alex Rodriguez's ceiling, his ceiling, Rick, I'm not saying he's going to be there, but his ceiling by the end of the season is a top five player in SimWorld Prep. And I think his floor is top 20. I think at the worst, he is the 20th ranked player, but I would be shocked if he was that low. His highest is top five. I could see him in the top five by year's end. I, I'll i say this, and some people might disagree because people have different definitions of the word, but he is the most underrated player in SimWorld Prep to me. Um, he is just as good of a pure scorer as just about anybody else, not named Jafet Towns. Um, he, he is that guy, and I think this year with maybe a better coach, a coach who's invested and is going to work around him, he is going to have quite a year, and a big man like Akeem Young is going to help okay. him a lot. And of course, well, let, me, let me ask, let me ask you really quick. I don't mean to interrupt. I'm asking you no, really good. quick. I just want to do a quick little survey. You, who who are you taking, A. Rod or Bernard James offensively? 
it's a tough one. And the the easy, soft answer would be that it really depends on the composition of the rest of my roster. But, and I might just have an affinity for Alex Rodriguez. I really like the kid. I like what he can do. I'm taking Alex okay. Rodriguez. I'm taking Alex All Rodriguez. All right, who are you, who are you taking? Uh, A-Rod or Nas Howe? I knew this one was coming next. I thought maybe you'd ask me about Cole Webb, and I would have taken Alex Rodriguez. And this is no disrespect to the other players. Oh no, this is I'm, all. Re- I'm putting you on the hot seat, not the lukewarm This, this is all respect. I gotta put you on the this is all respect to Alex Rodriguez. I think Benari, Cole Webb, who I just said I'd take him over both of them, are both phenomenal players. That's how good I think Alex Rodriguez can be. Um, for me, Nas Hall is the interesting one because to me that one is a it's a straight push to me. And that might be a hot take in itself that I would take Alex Rodriguez on the same playing field as Nas Hall. Um, that one's a toss up to me. I'd be happy with either one of my roster. Um, no safe take. So if I have to give a pick, it, it's Nas Hall because you would rather go with what you know than what I think is his ceiling. And I think his ceiling is at best a little bit better than Nas Hall. But again, that is the absolute ceiling for him. And that's when I say that, I mean, his ceiling's a, a little better than what we know of Nas Hall, not necessarily better than Nas's ceiling. So that one's a push for me. But if I have to choose, it's Nas Hall. But that's how highly I think of this kid, Alex Rodriguez. Okay. Yeah, I, I do. I do want to see what what he fell into your your mental space. So now I know we can move on. Okay. All right, and and let's let's also talk about this kid, Enzo Wolf. I re- he's a scrappy. He's a scrappy guard, only five foot ten, one thirty nine. I mean, he's a little guy. He's a little guy, but he plays big. He plays with heart. Um, he's a great team leader. And he's a great facilitator. Uh, so he's going to be a piece. And let's also not forget, they are returning their second leading scorer who averaged about 12 a game last year behind Alex Rodriguez and Donovan Bird Culver. So they've got the pieces. They've got a coach who cares and is invested. I think this team is a sleeper team, to me anyways. Uh, look. I, <sighs> I like the North. I don't. I, I like the. I, I like the team. I think their Googlob is better than last year's version. I don't love it. Um, I mean, I, I I'll be honest with you. I'm still perplexed on how Hair Canada left Canada. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I I just. I'm still. I haven't gotten over that. <laughs> I have. I haven't crossed that. I'm sure the coach has. I'm sure the players have because you have to. You have to move on. But you know, I I, I like Alex Rodriguez. I think I think the combination of Enzo Wolf playing point and A Rod playing the two is gonna be a really good look. I like Akeem Young. I think that addition is, is is good too. But the rest of these guys outside of those three, I have a lot of question marks about. Yeah, and I, and I, I I'm looking at I'm looking at uh Theophilus, maybe, you know, you might can do some things. Uh, Cishu might can do some things, but I'm really, Donovan Col- Bird Cova, maybe, but I'm re- I'm really pushing at this point. Besides Enzo, A-Rod, and Akeem Young, I'm not sure what they have left in the tank to get them to making some, getting some wins. They're going to beat last year's record for sure. They got a better coach. Yes. They have a better situation for sure. But, I, but how much better than last year? Eh, I'm not sure. And to me, the whole thing about this team is this is this is a team brimming with potential. Their floor is, is a little higher than last year, but not a whole lot higher, I agree. Um, but their ceiling to me is what's so much higher this year. Um, so really it's going to be is Alex Rodriguez as good as I think he is? Does he take over and be a 20-point-per-game scorer? Can Enzo Wolf step up and be a five, six assists per game kind of guy, run this offense and play solid defense? Um, and can some of the new guys they brought in, can Akeem Young be as close to a walking double-double as possible? To me, it's a this is a potential team. And what that comes down to is how can Coach Hyman bring that out of these players because if he can i think they reach that potential if not like i said i think their floor is a little bit higher but not a whole lot than it was last year yeah i agree uh it's gonna it's gonna take a really good coaching job uh to squeeze the most out of this orange i think they're gonna be okay uh, okay to decent 
no matter what happens this season because of the because of the way the team is made up. But if you want to really make some noise, it's going to take a it's going to take a phenomenal uh, coaching job as far as strategy and as far as overall coaching for Coach Hyman to really get this team to get the most out of the squad. We'll see. Yeah, and uh, that's so. But Rick, that's it. We got uh, one team that is championship or bust in the originators, and then we got one team that is. A moving on up like the Jefferson. Yep. They're just moving on up like the Jefferson. Um, <laughs> exactly. They're moving on up. So that's all we got for today. Uh, we'll be back with more Founders Region teams tomorrow. Won't tell you who they are. But, Rick, what do you got for oh, No, 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 no. You, you might be back tomorrow. I won't be. I'll be back on Monday. Oh, so. look at that. I got burned. Fine. You, all right, we'll be back on Monday. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't let me stop you. You can come back tomorrow. I'm going to get my party hardy hardy on, on tonight. <laughs> I'm hosting a happy hour. Yale says he's coming through. So we're going to be getting our party hardy hardy on tonight. And I'm not going to be no good for nobody come Saturday. <laughs> all, right, all right, fine. We'll be back Monday then. We'll be back Monday. You heard it here first. We are not doing weekend episodes. I, I had no there idea we didn't do that. But here we are. <laughs> there we go. Monday it is. See you guys Monday. Let's cuss and discuss. Put it in the chat. I'm out.